All right, so I recently took out my 6950XT for a benchmark in Warzone. It performed very well, but I noticed that the hotspot temperature was extremely high and actually reaching its limit at 110 degrees. And the delta between the GPU temp and the hotspot temp was sometimes 30 to 40 degrees. So I decided to load it up on my bench today and get into a raid in Tarkov. I'm on interchange here. The fans are running at max 2500 RPM and the hotspot is hitting nearly 110. I'll just let you hear this thing. It sounds like a jet turbine with all fans running at max. It's about 65 decibels up close and 50 near my phone. Oh, maybe it's, it's between 65 and 70 decibels up close. And you can see how fast those fans are running. Yeah, we gotta do something about that. So it's finally time for me to take this thing apart and figure out what's going on with it because the temperatures are definitely not right. There are 14 screws to remove on the back plate to separate the GPU from the cooler. Take note that there are two different types of fasteners here. These smaller silver ones, which are in these slots, six total. And then there are these larger black colored screws with a spring attached. There are eight of these total. It helps to keep these separated. There are three connectors you want to disconnect from the back plate. The first one on the back side here. Second one is next to the PCI connectors. And the third one, oops. I guess that works. I don't recommend doing it that way. So I didn't realize this was a fastener either. That sticker is the warranty seal. You do need to break it in order to complete the process of removing the cooler from the GPU. Once you've got all the fasteners removed, you can go ahead and take it apart. Usually it takes a bit of pressure to force it apart. In the case of this card, it just kind of fell apart at the first pull. Initially, I suspected that the thermal paste might have gone bad due to the symptoms. Basically, thermal paste is a thermal interface material that is applied between the GPU cooler and the chip itself. There needs to be enough pressure between the GPU cooler and the chip so that the thermal interface material can do its job, which is to transfer heat. If there isn't enough pressure, then there can be air gaps and that interferes with the conduction of heat and proper pressure ensures that there's good contact between the thermal interface material and the chip and the cooler. Like I mentioned earlier, I had suspected that the thermal paste had maybe gone bad. So I was planning on replacing the paste. Upon inspection, it looks like the paste is fine. It looks like the cooler is making contact at an angle with the chip. And if you look closely, you can see that the thermal pad indentations on the left side of the screen are more pronounced than the ones on the right side of the screen. And if you look at the thermal pads covering the VRAM, you kind of see the same thing. The ones on the left side look more flattened out and you can see evidence of it kind of pulling off unevenly because it's been compressed. And if you look at the VRAM, especially the one in the top left corner, you can see that there was a lot of compression there because when it got pulled off, some of that material stayed on there. The ones on the right side, however, do not have that evidence. Taking a close look at the chip itself, I can see two distinct patterns on the left side. It looks like there was good compression there. On the right side, it looks like it kind of made contact but is not really hugging there. So given this new information, I'm pretty sure if I put it back together with the proper pressure applied, it would be fine. However, since I've got it open anyways, I took this as an opportunity to replace the thermal paste with one of my go-tos, Cooler Master CryoFuse Ultra High Performance. It has a thermal conductivity rating of 14 watts per meter Kelvin. You can see that the material's a bit viscous. It's pretty thick compared to other thermal pastes I've used before, but it works really well. And it has a much higher rating than anything else I've seen or tested in this price range. 
it's very fairly priced stuff for what it could do. I did buy a set of thermal pads to possibly replace the existing ones, but they look fine. So I'm going to leave them as is. And basically you just want to put it back together in reverse order. Make sure that you hook up the black LED connector that's internal first. And the other two connectors you can do after you fasten it back together. But don't forget to do that LED connector. So I've replaced the stock thermal paste with Cooler Master Cryo Fuse. And I've readjusted the pressure of the GPU cooler onto the chip. And I double and triple check to make sure there's good contact and even pressure across the entire surface. So let's go see if it made a difference. So just to recap, we were at a hot spot around 110, temp was 70, mem junction around 60, fan RPM around 2500, and the decibel level was around 65 to 70 in front of the card and around the 50s closer to me. And now after reseating the cooler, I'm at 90 on the hot spot. That's a 20 degree difference, okay? The fan RPM is about 40% lower at around 1500 now. The sound is much more reasonable. It went down by a good 10 decibels up close and it's not drowning out every other sound in the room anymore. And lastly, I'll just share some side-by-side -side footage of before and after. The interesting thing is that the performance almost feels like it wasn't really throttled even though it was hitting its temperature limit on the hotspot a lot. If you notice the memory junction temperature on the before side, it's lower than the junction temperature on the after side. Looking at that, when it's properly configured, it looks like the memory junction should be taking away some of the heat from the hotspot. On the before side, the difference between the memory junction and the hotspot is a lot larger than the difference on the after side. Getting into some matches of ship miss, we're seeing the same thing. The performance difference is almost negligible, but the fans are running at a much lower RPM. The hotspot is not hitting its limit and the memory junction is soaking up some of the heat from the hotspot. All right, so that's all I got for this one, guys. For any of you Red Devil owners out there, I hope this was helpful or informative. If you liked this video, then make sure you check out the related videos and playlists on the screen now. And as always, thank you for dropping by and I will see you in the next one.